welcome to the Meet Dave podcast. I'm Dave Williamson, your host. Look, I think we take it for granted a lot and we just assume people do this. But if you don't already, please subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any of those uh, platforms, if you're watching on YouTube, just click subscribe, leave a comment. You can rate it. Uh, All that stuff helps out so much, man. And uh, we really want to reach as many people as we can with this. So we'd appreciate if you uh, show some love, show some support, and do that. Uh, also, I'm going to be on the road doing stand-up comedy. Come out and see me. I always sell my Meet Dave all-purpose seasoning and rub on the road. You can come get some laughs, pick up some of this. I'm going to be in Louisiana soon, the Lafayette in New Orleans. I'm going to be in Orlando at the uh, Oviedo Performing Arts Center. Ovi- Oviedo? Oviedo? I don't know. It's part of town. If you live in Orlando, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's the bourbon beer and uh, barbecue bur- bourbon and beer. I should probably get that right. There's a barbecue festival going on. So I'm going to be hanging out at the barbecue festival and also doing a show that night. That's the first weekend of May. Check out my website, DaveWilliamsonComedy.com. It's got all this information on there. Uh, and you could also just buy my uh, seasoning on my website and it'll ship out to you. And uh, I'm excited uh, for this episode, I'll tell you that, because I've been trying to get this guy on for a long time. Uh, Always had a hard time getting our schedules together, but this guy's helped me out so much. He's been a day one friend from the moment I called him. And uh, I also just think he's a really interesting person, and I'm excited to to dig into it and talk to him. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. So please meet Ryan Lane. Hey, guys. I want to take one minute real quick to let you know about something I feel very strongly about. People always ask me, Dave, you're a comedian who's obsessed with barbecue. What's your secret? And I'm going to tell you, it goes deeper than just the food. It's the kind of wood you use to smoke your food. People are always saying like, Dave, how do you get the right wood to smoke your food with? And I'm telling you, you got to start with the guys who do this Non-stop. This is all they do is just woods, and that's Bear Mountain Barbecue. My pellet smoker loves Bear Mountain pellets. It's always filled to the brim with all their amazing different flavors. Uh, they take woods seriously. And like I said, it's all they do. They're obsessed with it. They don't manufacture grills or grill accessories and a thousand other products like rubs and sauces. All they do is wood. Now, you may be asking, Dave, why does it matter what kind of wood I smoke my food with? Well, when you're grilling meats, when you're grilling veggies, when you're doing anything that you're going to put in your body, you want to get that delicious, smoky flavor. And the quality of the smoke matters. You got to get the best smoke by choosing the best wood. Bear Mountain, hands down, has the best wood. All their products come from choice hardwoods. Uh, There's no fillers. There's no binders. There's no additives. From bag to bite, you'll experience the difference with Bear Mountain. Uh, open it up, smell the bag. You can just put it in your hand and go like, like you're an expert on wine or you're smelling hops or night. It's the same thing with wood. Just get up in there. You're going to, you're going to, uh, smell the difference. And once your food is cooked, you're going to taste the difference. So go to BearMountainBarbecue.com to find a retailer near you. So you can do the bear maximum on flavor. See what I did there. All right, let's get back to the podcast. I'm excited for today because this is long overdue. Uh, And that's because I know I'm busy, but this guy's busy, man. He's running an empire, uh, but he's been a friend a long time. And I've asked you, Ryan, a thousand times to come on the podcast so we can never make the schedules work. But today, it's finally happening. My buddy, my pal, my compadre, Ryan Lane, finally on the podcast. What's going on, bud? Yes, sir. I I think you probably make it sound like I'm busier than I really am. So (laughs) I know you're running crazy too, but I I don't know. The world of barbecue is just a fun place to be. And I think we stay busy because we love it. Sure. Uh, It's just addictive, you know? Sure. Well, and so for people that don't know, uh, Lane's Barbecue, uh, I'd say you guys are have your, your hat in a couple different avenues of the barbecue world, but uh, yeah. how I know you, you're, I would say your um, main stronghold on the industry is you uh, produce amazing rubs, your own branded rubs, and then also uh, as a, I guess, co-packer is the correct term, right? Uh, for yeah, a lot of, a lot of great people. You need to be a co-packer, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for, so a lot of great, handsome successful barbecue personalities uh you know they use your company 
to uh, produce their seasonings, correct? That's right. Starting yeah. with hey, this one. There you go. There you go. I know. When did we – we met, what, was it four or five years ago? When did Chris introduce us? Probably about then. I was uh, talking about trying to produce my own rub, uh, my Meet Dave all-purpose seasoning of rub that you can purchase at DaveWilliamsonComedy.com. And my buddy, my cousin Chris, who's my best friend and uh, has a – a couple of really great restaurants there in the uh, Monroe slash Lawrenceville slash like Winder area of Georgia uh, yeah. told me, man, I got a I got a guy that I uh, know in my community who, um, you know, uh, specifically does a lot of barbecue rubs or whatever. And you should reach out to him. And I reached out to you and you were super helpful with it. And then, you know, I found out that you do all the Rectex rubs uh, and I had a great relationship with Rectex. We'll still do. And then I found out that you do this person's rubs and that person's rubs. And I'm like, oh, Ryan was, this isn't just like a dude my cousin knows. This is the right guy to go to for this. So I've been a fan of Chris Collins for a long time. So he's got not just a couple restaurants, but like yeah. Local Republic is one of my favorite places in downtown Lawrenceville. Yeah. They just opened an LR Burger in Duluth too. He meant he's yep. popping them up everywhere. But yeah, they, he's got three or four right in our backyard. It's like, always a go-to for date night. Um, and so I'm glad you made the intro. Yeah. The rec tech thing that kind of happened eight or nine years ago. When we first launched the rubs was the first day that I met Jody and Ray and those guys at a barbecue event in Augusta or in Evans. Yeah. Um, and I was like, these are guys that I want to hang out with. So they had the most, one of my fraternity brothers, like you got to meet this guy. And so I ended up hanging out with Jody and them all weekend long. I don't think we sold any rubs. We <laughs> did a whole lot the barbecue competition, but I was like, when we left, I was like, that cost a lot of money. I don't think we sold hardly anything, but like <laughs> I had a, I had one of those feelings like coming here is going to, seriously pay off in the future yeah man it's and, all about building relationships right yeah we don't really tell a lot of people that we co-pack seasonings it's kind of one of those things like if if word gets out we don't advertise it um but the way we would like to do it is just man we want to create and help you create an insane product that people are going to love yeah and so we find if we do people or do uh, business with people. It sounds kind of weird, but do business with people <laughs> <laughs> that, that we just enjoy working with. And they're already in the barbecue game and love cooking. Um, just great products come out. Well, I mean, people are so curious about it too, man. I, I, uh, anytime I'm talking about or promoting my meat, Dave, all purpose seasoning and rub, uh, <clears throat> people always ask me like, how do you like, like, how did it, how did you get to this point? And so the way I break it down, and I'm sure this is an immense oversimplification, but I'll, I'll throw my two cents in there and then you can tell me what I'm missing. But um, my experience was you find a co-packer, you call them up, you talk to them. So in my case, that was you. And I sent you basically a recipe for, yeah. you know, because it's, it's my recipe, right? So I send you my recipe for what I am trying to accomplish. And then you guys kind of mess with that and you send back like three different skews of that recipe because there's no two recipe that like, you know, the recipe is never going to be exact, you know, because the salt yeah. that you source might be different than the salt I source out here on the West Coast or the uh, the, the grain might be different uh, of a certain ingredient or something like that. So you sent me three different skews and then we go back and forth. I go, OK, I like this one, but can we make it uh uh, a little less spicy or, or pull back the pepper flakes or whatever. And however many times it takes to, to do that, uh, you, you lock in what your recipe is going to be that you're going to manufacture. And then, uh, and then you come up with a label and the label's got to have certain schematics and fit certain, you know, criterias. And then you're off to the races. You decide what size bottle you want. And then, uh, anytime now you have all that stuff, you have that formula. And every time I need to reorder, I just hit you up. Instead of going to my kitchen and trying to create an exact yeah. batch, you have the, the capabilities of making an exact batch every time. And uh, and then I or decide how much I'm going to order and then you ship it out to me. Yes. It's when you say it like that, it sounds super simple. The problem is, is that's what, so you're out in California. We're in Georgia. Yeah. So what you're running to your store and grabbing things. That's always the biggest misconception is, 
where it say we're using the same eight ingredients that you're using those there's so many variations of those that yeah. what you have by the time we create it it just doesn't come out right that's why i always tell people like be as specific as possible like if you're using a brand of like morton salt or you're getting your paprika from kroger or Publix. what's a big grocery store out there uh ralph's is where i get my yeah. salt and pepper. say you're going there you know they might carry something different than like Publix or kroger carries here mm-hmm. so just understanding that like the beauty is most of the people that that's an amazing product that you have in your hand but most people before you released it hadn't tried it so yeah. i'm always like listen there could be a little variation but as long as you love the end result you know it's it's a good thing which is why we're always like let's try three different things even paprika we could bore people but like there's five different six different versions of it based on like the color of it and so one little you know slight variation it can change it a lot so yeah have you ever had like um an issue where there was a particular product that you were, you know, producing for quite a while for someone. And then all of a sudden your ability to get a certain ingredient changed. So now like uh, their, their recipe had to change a little bit. Yeah. Not only that, but you could have something, especially so the dry game, like in the rubs and the sauce game is completely different. So like on the seasoning side, you can just create something. You tell us to make it, we make it, we put it out. It's great. On the sauce side, though, you have the the pH level. So when you're mixing wet ingredients and cooking them, or even if it's cold fill, different sauces, different acidity levels, it can change everything. We're actually going through that right now with our pow pow sauce. It's been oh, the pow pow sauce. It's well, I got bad news for you. It might be going away because like <laughs> we can't get the pH levels right. It's been fine for two or three years now huh. and something has changed. I don't know if it's with the the pineapple juice or whatever it is, but the acidity is too high. And so the only way to do that is to change the recipe, but it's not as good. Wow. And so it's happened with us and it's happened with others. There's some things, a lot of times I'll judge it too. When something comes in, I'm like, this goes against the way that like the process that we use. And yeah. I just don't think that we can recreate it the way that you want to. Wow. What and a so, mystery. Figure out what's what, what killed the pow pow sauce. Like I know it's the day the pow pow died. And that's the thing. It's like, I don't want to put out a product that I know is going to go bad on the shelves. You know what I mean? And the department of agriculture is not about to let us do that either. So yeah. it's like, you can't figure out what's changing. Like, it, you know, you're going to have to do away with it. How many different SKUs do you guys have that are uh, la- like, you know, branded lanes? Yeah, so we've got about 20 different like dry blends and then eight or nine sauces. And then we've got our like turkey brines, which has been like the biggest thing for us over the past couple of years. Just people are brining turkeys and smoking them. It's it's crazy. So yeah. And- growing up, it was mostly people frying or mm-hmm. cooking them in the oven and really brining has been this huge thing ever since. I mean, even before COVID, but during COVID, it really took off. Yeah. Well, and if it's a slow year for selling brine, then uh, you lose, you get rid of all your inventory during Thanksgiving for sure. <laughs> Everyone yeah. hops on Amazon and freaks out and goes, oh crap, we didn't get a brine. You know, I know it was, it was last year was nuts. It almost took us out. It was crazy. <laughs> What, what happened to Ryan? Uh, the the brine wars of 2024. I know. The, seriously, you would never think brine wars, but it really is. It's just a matter of. <laughs> That's it, the, the worst know. reality show ever. Turkey brine yeah. wars. <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling this podcast probably won't last long. <laughs> we start talking about brine. Nah, man, this is people who listen to this are barbecue nerds, man. They love every minute of this. Uh, don't sell Don't sell that short. Um, so uh, what, has there ever been a time that uh, someone has, uh, you know, called you up and wanted to make a product or you started the process of making a product and you're just like, are you sure? <laughs> You don't have to name names, but uh, so we actually I actually have those calls probably about once every two weeks. And a lot of it is this. I, I have a job. I have this incredible seasoning blend on the side that I want to do on the side and really build it up, which I 100 percent support. That's exactly what we did. Yeah. Um, but as far as like the problem is, I tend to try to talk them out of it like, 
hey, until you get to a certain point, like you're producing enough bottles that it makes sense and you're on the road all the time. This is truly like something on the side that you're really passionate about, but you have enough uh, people wanting it. And so like you're not tying up cash for too long. But a lot of times I'm like, listen, if you're not going to sell more than a few hundred bottles, just make it yourself. And that's a really a lot of the times is what and not trying to talk them out of using us. But I just know that the last thing I want to do is like say, hey, man, you've got to make 500 or a thousand bottles and we put it together and then they pay us money and then it just sits there. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they hate me, you know, and I'm like, man, just make it yourself. Package it up on the dry side. It's really easy. Like yeah. if you're doing sauces, you're not going to be able to do that. But until you get and that's where tell people like the seasoning game is tough. It's real competitive. It's a, and and I don't think a lot of people realize that they're like, man, I can blend salt and sugar and a couple spices and make a lot of money. And the truth is like you, you can't unless you're going to sell it. Like if you're aggressively getting out there and getting in stores or picking up different ACE hardwares or butcher shops, like it's a volume based game. Like you need to, a lot of product. And that's really how we got into the co-packing side of it is um, I had gone out to rec tech and I knew that they had private labeled some seasonings. And Jody was like, Hey, would you guys be interested? And I'm like, heck yes. Now, if we can bottle all theirs, now we can buy that much more salt, that much more pepper, yeah. that much more pepper and all those things. And if we can get our costs down, That's like how you really make it move. And then you can get more aggressive with pricing. You can get more aggressive with the advertising. And it's really, I mean, you know, it's marketing. Like you guys do such a great job, even on the comedy side. But imagine if you're not marketing. Yeah. Like, you know, it's it's just tough, but it's expensive. Well, so for me, I can, when I go on the road, I can bring about 48 bottles in, uh, in a suitcase because that keeps it under 50 pounds. And, uh, and I can, so I could check it. And then, you know, if, if I sell three or four shows that weekend, I, I don't think there's been many weekends I didn't sell out. So if every weekend I go on the road, I can sell almost 50 bottles, then, you know, it, it moves. Um, you know, the, the website sales kind of slow and just kind of go little by little, but I've never really pushed that because I was always just shoving bottles into a, envelope myself and writing someone's address and mailing them out. So now yeah. I just got Cosmo from Cosmo Q yep. to distribute for me. So now you guys send, uh, when you send me a pallet, you send half of it to him and it's in his yep. warehouse. So now um, when people go on my website and they order a bottle, that order goes to his system and then his team of people ship it out instead of me coming, being on the road for three weeks and we're like, Oh crap, these people are waiting for their seasoning. You know, now Cosmo just ships it out for me just like that. So I finally got that. So now I want to start concentrating on marketing and just putting up like once a week, putting up some sort of an ad for, you know, on my Instagram for, Hey man, don't forget to buy your bot. Cause every time I do that, people, it like, it reminds people like, Oh shoot. Yeah. I'm almost out of that. Or I've been meaning to try that. And then they go on the website and they order, you know? Yeah. Most people like, unless they're in the perfect spot to buy at that moment, they're not going to do it. And then we're so distracted anyways that like you just move on until they see it again. Like you really have to be consistent. But I mean, in the day, like Amazon now, if you're only shipping stuff out once every week or two, when you're getting home, like people aren't going to stay tuned in. Like they, like they want to order it. They really want it that day. Sure. And that's where Amazon for us has been, such a huge piece of growth, you know, did that prime badge, you know, even, even if you go on Amazon, our seasoning is going to be more expensive than if you go on our website because that shipping is kind of built in. Yeah. It doesn't matter, man. They'll come to our site, do the research they need to do, check out the recipes and then always go to Amazon. Yeah, first. They'll, they'll do it just yeah, for the convenience factor for sure. Yeah, I get it. But that's the thing. So, but Amazon is an expensive game. Like once again, you've got to advertise, you've got to move a lot of product. If you're going to have the prime badge and ship it into their warehouses, you're just sitting on a lot of cash, you know, like in that seasoning. And so you've got to move it. Yeah. I need to get, need to get into the Amazon game for sure. Uh, I think that's probably, I, I'm going to, I'm going to let this fly a little bit with the way I got it set up with the e-commerce, but then, 
uh, at some yeah. point I need to flip the switch and, and, uh, and figure out how to get it correctly working through Amazon. Cause, cause yeah. I know there's, well, a, I know the there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. The beauty of having a co-packer too, is a lot of people think it's going to be a lot more expensive, but it's often not like say you're trying to bottle 50 bottles. Well, by the time you buy all the individual ingredients, take your time, mix it up, put it in the bottles, label it, cap it, seal it, case it up and then ship it out. Like it's really not that much more for us to do it just because of our buying power. Yeah. Well, so now um, I'm at this point where I've only just sold direct to consumer and um, I have had a few people who have like mom and pop stores and like uh, I gave a couple bottles to Malcolm to put up in his store and just kind of like testing the waters were that. Um, and I'm, this is the first time now I had a guy, uh, phone call the other day who, um, is a hard yes on, Hey, I want to order 12 cases, uh, put it on. I, he's got a network of, um, hardware stores through Alabama wants to put them up and all the stores. So now I got to figure that out. How do I, uh, you know, make a PO and and what's my wholesale price going to be and, do I get you to ship them? Do I get Cosmo to ship them? Like I got to, I got to figure out my process because I do have people out there that want to put them on shelves. Here's the beauty of you. You've got a lot of friends. You know what I mean? Like whether it's us helping you out or Cosmo is helping you out or Malcolm, like yeah. th- those are like big people helping out, you know, which is fantastic. But that's, I would say if you get those opportunities to move 12 cases like that, like that's, that would be three different weekends for you going to try to move them at shows yeah. where you're not going to make as much per bottle, yeah. but like you're just getting them in more people's hands. And that's really what it's about. Your product is so good. Once people try it, they're going to love it. Sure. Yeah. I think I appreciate you saying that. Uh, we're going to clip that and use that as our promo clip. All right. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Well, I'll t- let me tell you, uh, I'm going to back up for a second too yeah. and tell you that I really do believe in this product and I really, and it's not exactly what I had in mind, but that's why I enjoyed that process of going back and forth with you when we were tweaking yeah. the recipe. But what I was going for, and I think what we improved was, um, I felt a little guilty when people were like asking me for a rub, but they just kept doing it, you know? Um, and yeah. that sexual innuendo, I, I heard it as I said, yeah. it. my bad. Yeah. I know I started us off wrong. Yeah. My bad. It's all right. It ha- it's barbecue. It happens yeah. all the time, <laughs> but people kept asking me like, uh, Oh, those ribs look great. What, you know, seasoning did you use? What rub? And I just tell people it's essentially salt and pepper. Like there's a few other things mixed yeah. in there, but you can make your own. You can, and all they wanted was like, where can I buy it? Where can I buy it? So I was just putting other people's yeah. links up there and making money for other people. So finally I'm like, all right, this is ridiculous. Let me look into what it takes to make my own seasoning, you know, and sell it. And so I felt guilty though, being like, I am a barbecue expert Buy my rub and not a bunch of my friends rubs who are, you know, way more invested and involved in this and been doing it longer, you know, but I thought about it and I go, you know what? I am not afraid to say I'm an expert at is cooking barbecue on the road. And when we went and did the pandemic tour and we were gone for months at a time, I couldn't bring, cause I I used to have a bin and I'd bring all my, my, my lanes, my lanes rubs and my, my rec tech rubs and all these rubs from all my buddies. And I'd mix and match them, or I'd use this on this and use I go, we don't have space since we're going for so long during the pandemic. I go, so I'm going to mix one big vat of rub up that I can kind of use on everything. And so it was the early version of this. And it was, you know, uh, just a bunch of ingredients that I like. And then I used it for a rub when I cooked the ribs, I put it on steak when I was cooking steak, when I was cooking eggs for the guys and, and we're, you know, cooking leftovers at night. I just had this big vat of stuff that I just put on everything. And I go, I love this. Like this is what I'm gonna do this when I'm at home. I just have this one big vat of, you know, yeah. uh, and so that's, that was the, the, the recipe that I sent you. And then when you sent it back, it, it was, you know, like we said, the ingredients were a little bit different because you get different stuff there. There. And when we got into this, I'm like, this is now truly something you can put on everything. And that's what people Absolutely. tell me. They're like, dude, my mail lady said she put it on popcorn. I'm like, never thought of that. I'm telling you, popcorn is the way to go. Actually, the popcorn's a perfect way to sample seasoning. People are always like, how, how do I sample it? I'm like, put it on popcorn. 
So good. Yeah, that's not so good. Not what is your favorite thing to cook on the road? Like you did travel around a ton. I remember I always saw pictures and you talked to like you guys came through Augusta. Yeah. Didn't y'all do a show near Augusta? Uh, or Evans, were y'all, you were with the rec tech guys. Maybe you were in Atlanta and they came out there. Yeah. Uh, well, when I was touring with Bert, we've, we've done Atlanta and Augusta. Um, and then I did a show at rec tech headquarters when I did my barbecue tour. That's and it. Warren Sapp came up and hung out. That's the and one. We, yeah. And we literally do the, those rec tech guys were like, why don't you stay in the cottage? Stay in the cottage. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I got my little travel trailer i'll just park in your little facility here and they're like it's not a pro and i'm like all right i'll check the cottage out and i go over the cottage is a eight bedroom mansion on a golf <laughs> course <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right we'll stay here like you know yeah. i called up hey, stop calling it a cottage. <laughs> i called up board zap and i'm like yo check out your hotel room and come over here right now <laughs> like yeah there's a lot of bedrooms um, but yeah, yeah. uh, the, th to bring it back to the rec tech guys too, they were the first ones I saw that were, um, making it personal too, because it wasn't just like the, uh, Asian persuasion rub. It was the Jody's age. Like they, yeah. they were all branded with their, right. and I didn't even know those guys yet, but I was like, Oh, the Ray's this rub. And you know, the, yeah. the chef, uh, you know, Mark. And it was like, you all, got Chef Greg, chef Greg you got yeah. John, you got all of yes. them. Oh, so yeah. they all had their own like kind of signature rub. And I was like, ah, I love that. Yeah. The beauty is, and this is what I love is like, I think uh, just having all the different seasoning companies out there, just the competition just elevates all of our games. You know I mean? You got Matt Pittman's got great stuff. Cosmos has great stuff. I really love Heath Riles. Like his rubs are fantastic. And so it's one of those things. It's like, yes, I am partial to lanes. I love our stuff and everything that we make. But the cool thing is, is like, there's a lot of great products out there. Sure. And so, you know, well, and if and you want something different, you can try something yeah, else. And I was going to say, that's the thing. Like a lot of times I know, like, uh, I like, you know, this particular meat church rub, if I'm doing, uh, you know, a bunch of pork belly or, or ribs or something. And, um, uh, I, I like this particular lanes rub, if I'm doing lamb or whatever, you know, it's like, I, I like. I like to layer them too. You know, I'll go, I'll go a little layer of, of my rub, a little layer of your rub, and then yeah. sprinkle a little bit of Al Fragani's, uh chimichurri rub on top. Like, you oh, know, yeah, like, like a little bit, a little bit of layering too, man. And honestly, more than, I think that's what most people do is they'll go a, a heavy layer, a light layer or whatever. Instead of layering, a lot of times what I do is I just mad scientist it together. I got a big, yeah. one of the big containers and I'll, I'll almost always start with a base of just kosher salt and coarse pepper, right? Yep. And then I'll just mix in like, uh, uh, like you know, twenty percent of my rub, and then I'll be like, okay, I want a little bit of that uh, white lightning in there. I throw a bunch of white light in there. I just mix it all up together, and then that's how it's a. Uh, it's you know, it's never the same twice, but I, I just like doing it that way. That's what. That's why our taglines keep experimenting. Yeah. Like that's my favorite thing to do is try something new. You know, and I love the the idea of layering, just because a lot of times most of our rubs start with a base of salt, pepper, garlic. Um, just getting the balance down and getting that base layered. Uh, but then you've got some different ones like the Kunami that's got the ginger and the togarashi and cubano and chili lime that are kind of just different from your your mainstay like barbecue seasonings. Yeah. Well, so you mentioned uh, competitions and festivals and things like that, and uh, Lane's Barbecue, not just about the rub game. Uh, you guys, you've been, you've been doing some pop-ups and stuff around town, right? And uh, you've been showing up and, in, in, um, you know, representing at, like, the Rub and Tug in, in Key West, and uh, we, we saw each other there and competed. So that was amazing. In fact, last time I saw you, not to, to keep the sexual in you, and it was out of this, but I believe <laughs> you were just wearing, like, uh, what they call those like a mankini uh yeah uh, 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 and you, you had, united states of america speedo is i think what you're, you're and you were covering yourself in the original w sauce i believe correct yeah uh, I, I don't think we got kicked out of the pool after that though right i slathered worcester sauce all over my body and then uh did a belly flop in to the pool and somehow still only came in second place who beat you? Did uh, Macklemore beat you? I don't remember. Some big guy. Yeah. I don't know. That was awesome, though. I remember looking up, and I was like, I'm 
you just poured W sauce all over his body. Yeah, just a little bronzer, you know? I just need a yeah, little. Yeah, but I will say, while you did not win the belly flop contest, you pretty much cleaned house <laughs> in the barbecue competition. I, right? was, I was very proud. Uh, Jody from Rec Tech was my teammate. Yeah. Uh, Roy Bellamy from the Dan Levitard show was my other teammate. My son, Owen, uh, was our uh, support system there. And uh, we we had a good team, and we were really proud of what we put out there. And speaking of second place, I don't want to start controversies, but it's been said by other people. Um, so we actually came in first in the judges' blind taste test votes uh, for three out of four of those categories, ribs, the ribeye, and the salmon. Yeah. And then uh, we were like, I think, top five with the picanha, but not quite all the way up there. And then, uh, you know, just that that people's choice vote, man, knocked us down. And so we we came in uh, second place overall for all that stuff. But, you know, I I take a lot of of victory that a lot of my barbecue heroes were there and that I didn't embarrass myself and I stacked up with them with the judges, you know. So that was was cool. I remember I got there and I was, so we got there, I guess everyone had already been there for a while and we walked in and everyone was meeting, doing like a little happy hour in the little hotel bar. And I walked in and Jody was the first guy I saw. I was like, Jody, what are you doing here? You know, he was like, I'm here cooking with Dave. I was like, Dave's here too. And I looked up and I see like the room is filled and I'm like, I'm like a kid in a candy store. Like so many just big personalities, guys that I'd never met. You know, Heath Rouse, I'd never met him or Cosmos. Uh, Mike with Blazing Star Barbecue. Yeah. Good dude. Yeah. Uh, it was just one of those times I, I called Burton afterwards. I was like, can we be invited again? Yeah. Like, we don't, when you said we've been out and about, we try to get out and do some things, but man, the seasoning game, it's just kept us busy. And so we have to say no to a lot of stuff. And I was like, that is one, I don't care what we have going on. Like, we will make sure we can be there every year. Yeah, you got to get there. It's it's a vacation if nothing else. Um, it's yeah, it's I, a blast. So there's the the next one's going to be um, late August, and I already called the comedy club at Q West and booked yeah. myself for that same weekend. So I'm going to be on. So we get to go. Yeah, you guys can come. Yeah, sure. It's oh, the same hey, weekend. Yes. So so I'm going to be doing the barbecue stuff all day, and then I'm going to have to drag my ass up to the comedy club and do a show at night. But I figured if I get a chance to double dip, then I'm going to do it, you know? Well, not only that, but if you have all of us in there, like, it doesn't matter if you suck. You know what I mean? Like, we'll laugh for you. Just, you know? Well, I wasn't <laughs> planning on sucking, Ryan, but no. thanks. <laughs> but if it happens, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, if I'm hey, on fumes. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, then, when, when you're, when, up, when you're on fumes during your, uh, you know, hour long comedy act, you know, what really is a good pick me up and support system, all your drunk buddies that you've been on a boat right. with all day long. I'm sure they'll be super polite. <laughs> what was your favorite part of that trip though last year? So we did lobster diving, uh, fishing, uh, which lobster diving, did you, you, did that like I grew up, that, yeah. Right? I grew up lobstering. Um, yeah, you know, we had some bad luck with uh, just you know, finding uh, legal lobster. We, me and my, I, I thought you got it, it was the first year, so the rules weren't exactly crystal clear to everybody because they're still figuring yeah. it out, and you know, it's fine. Um, but we thought we got points for putting shorts in the boat, you know, but obviously, you can't keep them, you got to throw them back. Yeah. Uh, so we were, we were spending energy. Uh, catching the shorts and I was like well we'll at least get points off volume and then we found out that oh you can only count five of those and then that's it and I'm like I would have spent more time just going deep like let's just drive out deep to where there might be some bigger lobsters because yeah. you know because me and my son can actually dive <laughs> but we were we were with the other boat we you know Mike and uh, Al Fragoni and Max the meat guy were in the other boat then we were kind of staying together and so yeah. if nothing else it was a fun hang just helping those guys like uh, catch a lobster and like you know uh, watching them I scared the shit out of Max the meat guy man we went out into some deeper water where there was a bunch of people like like um just fishing on on like a, a like deep drops out there yeah and so we all jumped in the water to swim a little bit i'm sure everyone had to take a leak and everything so their boat was uh you know 100 feet away from ours or whatever and max is in there doing a, a gopro read to his gopro and i'm pretty good at holding my breath you know and so i snuck in the water 
And I, I went, I went down about 20 feet and came over and then came up right underneath him and went, blah, 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 blah. and he, he about shit himself, man. Overboard. He, he was, he, he, I'll quote him. He goes, you are a bad man. You are a bad, bad person. <laughs> I didn't know him either before we got there. And like, I've, his content is amazing. And so I'd never met him. There was a lot of guys yeah. that I hadn't met. Um, yeah, he really so, is. Max, the meat guy, man, he's, he makes, uh, you know, the traditional, uh, tutorial of, of cooking something up, uh, very cinematic, uh, very cinematic. spins, yeah. spins the pepper shaker out now. Um, he's, he's done a lot this past year. I realized very quickly that I cannot swim very well. Uh, I caught zero lobsters. Uh, mm-hmm. I drank more like ocean water than I did anything. So, well, well, to answer your question, my favorite part of the whole weekend was uh, by far the there's two different cook days. One was the actual competition around the pool, which was very yeah. fun, very cool. But the other cook day was after we got done lobstering, we went to a sandbar where they'd set up a party and there was um, 20 to 30 big green eggs and um, grills and tents and tables set up on a sandbar where we just pulled up and cooked steaks and cooked lobsters, fresh caught lobster from that morning. Um, and and anything else that they brought out, we just kept cooking and people came out on their boats and it was a big party. Like you'd see in a country music video. And, uh, and we just fed people for free and drank beers and smoked cigars as the tide came up. And by the end, uh, there was no sandbar left. We're just sitting in shallow water up to our knees, smoking cigars, uh, full bellies and, uh, watching our stuff float away (laughs) as we grabbed it and threw it in the boats. And, uh, I mean, what an experience to just sit out there and barbecue and have camaraderie in crystal blue waters. I will say that's like a top three barbecue moment for the past 10 years. I mean, literally, I, so we, we could have, I think, four people on the boat with us, plus the captain. And so I had our uh, marketing guy, Jeremy, one of our sales guy, Brandon. And then I called my brother and I was like, Brett, he's been in the insurance world for 20 years and I'm like, hey, come on out. This is going to be amazing. Yeah. And I remember we were standing out there in the sandbar and he's like, dude, your job is really cool. And I was like, <laughs> I wish I got to do this all the time. Yeah. This is a first. But I just remember looking around. I was like, it doesn't get much better than this. All right. So, so lobster is coming to you. You got steaks. Yeah. We had everything. So if, uh, if cooking barbecue with your friends on a sandbar in the middle of the Florida Keys is just a top – uh, you know, three moment in your barbecue experience. What are the other yeah. top moments? Doc? I can't imagine much beating that. No. So I would, that's actually a great question. So I would tell you my number one, I mean, besides just walking into a store and seeing our seasoning on the shelf still blows my mind, but it was back in 2000 and it was pre COVID. I think it was 2018. Um, we do a lot in Australia. So we've got our Lane's Barbecue Australia team and Jay and uh, they would started this thing called Meat Stock. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a massive like barbecue uh, music festival, but it's insane. And so the team over there was like, hey, we've got um, we're going to set up this big booth at the Melbourne show. And I was like, I'm coming. They're like, that would be amazing. Yeah. And so I was like, I called my dad. I was like, hey, dad can you stay on a plane for 20 hours? And he was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, let's go to Australia. And so we went for 10 days, went to flew into Sydney, hung there for a couple of days, had some amazing meals and then flew down to Melbourne. And one of the barbecue teams that lanes was sponsoring ended up winning the whole event. Ah, and so cool. Standing on a stage, like my dad was with me. Um, the whole team was up there. Brett was up there. Yeah. And I was just like, what is this? Like this, this, I originally started lanes as we were just selling brisket on the side of the road. Like it's amazing. I never envisioned anywhere where this would go. And now I'm on the other side of the world, standing on a stage, like, and like the team just won the grand champion. Now you're standing on a stage, holding a trophy with a bunch of people going, good on you, mate. Good on you. Hi. It it was, it was was just one of those things where I was like, this is, this is, can't really be happening. So it was, it was cool. And, you know, just for a seasoning company, it was nuts. Yeah. Uh, Any, any other moments up there in the top three or those, the one and two? Uh, Yeah. I mean, I, I think really just like walking in when we got into Academy sports, that was a big one for us. 
uh, just seeing like walking into like a big store like that and seeing the seasonings on the shelf yeah. next to all the amazing competition that, that we're up against. It sure. was just one of those things like I can imagine that being cool, but I think Australia and Q West are, uh, are a little yeah, cooler. Well, that's, yeah. I mean, T <laughs> West was pretty nuts. I like, I can't. And I think because I had zero like expectations going into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember we'd been out there, I'd been drinking ocean water all day and like we pull up and all these eggs are set out everywhere. And I was like, what is this? Yeah. There's coolers everywhere and you open it up. There's lobsters, Wagyu beef, like, it was crazy. Oh, it was like a grown man's. Uh, uh, you it was know, a slide. There was there was everything. Yeah. It was literally like a treasure hunt for forty five year old dads because you'd go up to yeah. a, a cooler and you'd lift the lid and you're like, "Is this going to be full of steaks and lobsters I could cook, or is this going to be full of cold beers?" And you lift it up and you're like, "It's got both," you know. And yeah, it was a win win, yeah. which was good because we didn't catch any lobsters. So. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome, man. Well, what's what's coming up, man? What do you got in the future here? Uh, I know you've you've uh, you've put some podcasts out, right? You're doing a podcast. We did. We just started. Uh, the first one came out maybe beginning of January. Uh, so we've only had four or five come out now. We've got a couple more that have been recorded. Okay. We need a guy from California on his next time around to to come through and and sit down and chat. Anytime, man. I got uh, um, I, I got nothing but time for like you. this too. And be awesome. Cool. Yeah, I would say we've got that. We've got a, uh, and that's at things. the table uh, with Ryan Lane, right? I'm looking at it right here. Right. Cool. Right. Go subscribe, guys. At the table, if you like barbecue content. Yes, please. We need as many people as we can to come come right. check it out. I'm gonna do it right now before I forget. There we go. That's awesome. How many? So you've been doing your podcast for how long now? Oh man. Uh, whew. Uh, I started it. Probably, if I had to guess, like maybe 2018. Yeah. Somewhere around there before the pandemic, for sure. And um, it's had a few different reiterations. And I would say the cool thing about my podcast is that inadvertently the name Meet Dave, which was supposed to just be a double, you know, uh, you know, play on words, double entendre for, yeah. for you know, me interviewing people, you know. And uh, I'd, I'd go on the road and I would just bring my sound equipment and I'd call up the local barbecue restaurant that I was going to go at, eat, eat at anyways and ask if I can interview somebody. And then I started becoming friends with all these cool people through it and really uh, reaching out to bigger and bigger names. And um, and then, you know, the pandemic happened. So that was impossible. But then Zoom kind of became a thing. So I was like, oh, now I could just ask even bigger names and they got time now and they'll hop on and yeah. let me interview them and learn and uh, and honestly, whereas podcasting, the whole name of the game is to put out a consistent, um, episode so you grow your listenership. I don't really yep. care that much about growing my listenership. Like I have my dedicated, you know, like fans and my dedicated people who really want this kind of content, you know, and meet Dave has become more of a brand. It's, it's like a nickname now. Like when I go, I mean, you saw when I go places, people are like, Hey, it's meet Dave. What's up? You know? And, uh, the kids I coach call me meet, you know, <laughs> like it's I like, I would it's, say you successfully created a lifestyle brand. Yeah, exactly. You know so, I mean? Which I think is what every, like everyone in this industry like dreams of. Yeah. Um, but it's really tough to do because you really have to live it out. And that's the toughest part. Yeah. So meet Dave has not just become the podcast. The podcast is a bonus. Um, yeah. Meet Dave's more about, you know, just my whole journey with, with being this guy who loves barbecue and is, uh, obsessed with it. And, um, you know, hanging out in those circles and cooking in my front yard and throwing improved impromptu parties and cooking outside the tour bus and, um, you know, so, so meet Dave's more just the brand of, of, uh, um, you know, putting out that content and, and living the lifestyle, like you said, and the podcast episodes are just a, a fun bonus, <laughs> which probably I mean, my producer hey. does not like hearing me say, mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. It's, it's been a, it's been a crazy ride. So for the last 10 years have been awesome. But like, I cannot wait to see what the next five to 10 hold. So, well, let's, been, let's do big fun. things together, brother. And when I come through town, uh, let's grab a beer and I'd love to come on, uh, at the table with Ryan lane and, Absolutely. and, uh, we we're, will, we're we'll definitely get that set up. We need to go to local Republic when you come hundred percent. 
Yeah. We'll go it's see my cousin Chris good. and we'll have some drinks at local Republic and, uh, uh, you know, eat, eat some of their good food. And then uh, maybe just a little teaser down the line. We'll talk about a little bit of a product um, expansion, a couple more yeah, SKUs. Yeah, you've got maybe. some awesome ideas, man. I can't wait until we finally make it happen. Yeah, I've been I've been tiptoeing around it, and I need to just just go for it, man. But, yeah, we do have an, uh, an idea. Uh, I got another idea I got to throw by you off the mic, too. But speaking of there lifestyle brands. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I really appreciate you, Ryan. Thanks so much, man. Uh, where can people go to buy some rubs? Where can people go to uh, keep up with you? Yeah, absolutely. So all of our social media is just Lane's Barbecue. Uh, you can go to lanesbarbecue.com, uh, Amazon. And then uh, on our website, we actually have a dealer locator too. So depending on what area you look in, you can enter your zip code and it'll show you what hardware stores or butcher shops near you has everything. There you go. All right, brother. I appreciate you, man. The podcast. So at yeah. the table with Ryan Lane. So yeah, we're working on growing that. It's I'm, brand new, but I'm looking at, uh, so Instagram is at lanes, barbecue, BBQ. Yep. And, uh, right. and if you, there's a link there that'll click you to the Apple podcast and Spotify and YouTube and everything. So that's right. Uh, check them out. I just subscribed. You should too. Sweet. All right, brother. I'll see you soon. And I can't wait to, mm. to uh, throw down some steaks and some beers with you. Absolutely. Hey, if not, I'll see you in August. 100%. Yeah, man. 